my name is Salman and uh, for my talk I'll be talking about uh, how I went from having something that started like a little toy and then ended up working as like a casual hit yeah. basically like the philosophy that I feel like was uh, the biggest factor in quote, bringing like a casual audience for one of my games or two in this aspect um, okay slide so who who am I? Uh, well, um, uh, again, my name is Salman. I love to prototype, uh, being able to experiment with different uh, game genres, uh, art, design. It, it makes me uh, happy. <laughs> I was excited uh, every day to wake up and do something. And um, if I could list any of my projects, I'd, I'd be going on for days. Uh, but here's a few of them on screen, um, and uh, I've worked on games that go from PC releases, games that have been released on console, mobile, web, uh, a wide spectrum of platforms. Uh, next. So yeah, so I've done web, mobile, I've released a game with uh, Humble Monthly, uh, I was able to dethrone uh, getting over it for a month or two, so that's an achievement. So that game is always number one on there. Uh, I also helped inspire a, a, a hit mobile game that's uh, probably close to a billion downloads by now, called uh, Stickman Hook. Um, also, I got featured a couple of times on the App Store with one of my games as well. Uh, also, yeah, Humble. Uh, bundle creators of color award I got and uh, also with one of the games I'll be talking about now I won the big indie pitch last year for it so got the whole bat it's right here <laughs> the blurring is good. <laughs> uh, yeah oh, oops. Uh, so what do I mean by toy uh, if you look at the, um, the the title of the talk it usually means like it has to be something that feels natural so if someone picks it up they can pick up and throw it and they'll know what they could do with it uh was it being able to make uh incorporate different scenarios like how you see little kids making a whole story happening with their little toys why is the barbie doll taking over the world and why is i don't know uh ken trying to say something I, just create being able to create a story or whatever you want with it and also being very accessible uh, which comes in with the whole natural feeling um, so to explain it a bit I'm gonna go through my uh, game called tap tricks and that was a it originally started as a ludum there a jam game and the idea was how could I um, I haven't played Tony Hawk but how could I make it so I could uh, get the feel of what it is, through, but also make it so it's playable with a single button? And uh, that challenge became was interesting. Um, a re a f how could you make it so that people would feel um, anxious when they move around places? How do you make them so that they make sure that they're able to hit certain things that they want to reach and also be able to go to somewhere if they want to? and that and and with that i had to also make sure that it was playable with touch since uh, a game engine that i was using called uh, construct 3 allowed me to make like a little live build on the spot and just send the link so someone could just play it on their phone or whatever device uh, be, being able to play test it quickly and that was instrumental for the game uh, as we'll find out in more so things uh, I did to make sure that it met the deadline or so it's like the 48 hour window was just trying to make sure that it had like a, a nice color palette, a um, few objects as possible just to lower the complexity of how I uh, make the levels. Like you could see from that screenshot if the other GIF is not showing is uh, you see that white rectangle that's always that's been used throughout the level is the same object just colors changed just the shape uh, and it's pretty useful for someone who doesn't who doesn't have enough time to do art at the time while doing everything else uh, and the other thing was trying to make sure that the game feel was there as well and uh, some of the easy stuff was just trying to do zooms 
tilts with the camera, slow motion here and there, uh, little particle effects like you see little stars when you uh, go through the hoops, when you go through uh, going to cannons and everything, uh, as well as you know some vibrations here and there in, in addition to sound. Uh, so how did the jam game do? It did pretty well. I had no expectations for it. Uh, within a week, uh, what was it like uh, eight hours after I finished it? I thought, how about uh, what was it? I got some sleep and then thought, why don't I make a little thirty-second trailer? And I just recorded myself playing it a bit and it became that and i was surprised within a week nearly a million people played the game or checked it out and uh, i had numerous comments asking for a mobile version or you better make a mobile version some people uh, saying they loved the game wish there was more levels which uh, took me by surprise since uh, all the levels were made in like the last six hours of the game and uh, it was uh, fun <laughs> um so what went right so when i was um were, so with the whole aspect of being able to quickly play test it by just sending a link uh i thought maybe why don't i let one of my little brothers try it so at the time he was seven six and uh, i just why i didn't say anything i gave him uh my ipad and with the game running and just let him go and I was uh, looking at him thinking, why isn't he getting, he was just smiling, laughing, making himself jump through uh, hoops, uh, go on like little ramps. And he didn't even know that he wasn't going to the goal. Uh, at the time I made this, so you have to go through every hoop, collect every coin in the level in order to finish the level. But he was so happy just reaching the goal in the most insane way where he was spinning out of control, bumping his head into everything. But he was so happy that that little joy in his face made me think, okay, I'll remove the restriction on how to progress. And I feel like that did, that helped a lot because um, I was able to facilitate people who were more hardcore in terms of that wanted, a, what was it, challenge and also facilitate, make it possible for people who just wanted to be straight casual with the whole game, not put the whole thing into it. And uh, it's a success in that way i guess I <laughs> and uh it was uh, interesting how, how like um it helped to design like all the levels like a little mini skate park um which proved to be super nice so yeah uh later on i ended up showing like uh, a build of the game for the big indie pitch did well enough to people to get a bat <laughs> uh and uh with it i also got um uh, a, a web release uh, deal and uh, pokey so through their system there's like a, a way to review the games and um, some people gave some funny comments uh, the the ones uh, that I really liked were the ones from uh, Brazilian players since they would be memeing all the time I had like a couple that just kept saying among us among us uh, other stuff <laughs> Or oh, this one from Mexico, which gave a positive review and said, what do you care about the review, I guess? <laughs> uh, so uh, at a more recent example I've got is a game called uh, Swingo. And uh, it originally started as a, a remake of an old jam game of mine, which was called Hands on Pete. And uh, a lot of people seem to like it. Uh, and yeah, let's continue so uh, it was it was a platformer where the whole yeah, hook was oh you have an extendable hand and you could all punch things you could use your fist to do stuff pick up boxes or even uh, use as a shield from little bullets coming at you and uh, it was uh, fun enough that uh, I got the deal uh, with the website called uh, Pokey and um, from that I ended up like uh, trying to remake it and it if you can see from the gifs of video on here it felt slow it felt hobbled it felt uh looking at the code it was too overly engineered to the point that i i was spending what should have taken like the core loop to be done in like a day or two I spent like a whole week just on trying to improve the movement be it through stuff that would in, invisible hand holding for the player uh, and uh, other stuff.
Yeah, that's normal. You just fix your, fix your headphone. Oh, it's on. It just oh, turned off because there was no oh, sound. <laughs> um, so uh, I ended up chasing like the complexity in terms of level design through how the player moved rather than stuff outside of the player that I usually did. And that made the game feel horrible and stilted. And I felt so, uh, what's the word? Yeah, I felt like I was bogged down. I was like, I was carrying a whole bag of rocks that didn't need to be carried for no reason. And then decided, why don't I talk to a couple of friends? And, uh, and in that, from that, I basically just, I was told, why are you, why is there platforming? Why don't you focus on the hands? And then uh, one other friend said, why don't you just make the ball into like a little pulley thing that just gets pushed around? And it was so eye-opening that it uh, was, uh, that I ended up remembering the, the toy. Like it has to be a toy aspect. Like it, it felt so fun just to move around, do basic things. Uh, just like the skateboard tap tricks did the skateboarding game and thus it turned into a different game where it ended up called, being called Swingo it started moving around uh, the character was jumping up and down it um I was it um ended up having collaborating with a friend on the art and it became much more than it was and uh if you give me a second I can show like a little uh Whoops, uh, video uh, that looked a lot like this. If I can zoom in, can you guys see it? Can you guys see it? the video? I'm just yep, wondering. Yep. All good. Yeah. And uh, the interesting what, thing about it was all these little kids that uh, ended up like show after they played it, the game ended up getting played by within a month of its release, uh from like December seventh, uh around five million pl people played it. And uh it was uh, and about um when it came to when people pressed like on the game on the web release version, uh there's like a little comment bar that shows up where they could write whatever they want. And it was the most heartwarming thing to see so many kids writing, I love this game. Oh, I love the Froggy. Like one even told a whole story about it, uh, about the game, like it was there even, <laughs> which uh, wasn't, but it was just like, uh, they built their own narratives from it. Um, they were able to uh, do things that they didn't think they would do. Like it, it, it hits the toy aspect that I was looking for, that I f had so much, I had forgotten during the development start when it was just called, when it was just hands on Pete to now becoming Swingo. <laughs> and yeah, I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Has anyone got any questions for Salman? I know one of my questions is, did you, have you done any marketing? Have you done anything for like TikTok or anything like that with the game? Honestly, I with uh, with this last game, I technically didn't. Mm -hmm. I was so bogged down in contract work. I was like, oh, whatever it does, I'll be fine with it. And uh, I was already. And uh, since we had a deal with uh, this uh, web platform, they handled the front paging and some other stuff for us. And it was just watching the numbers go up, mm -hmm. pretty much, and just seeing like uh, uh, like. 50,000 people playing it to this day still every day has been nice like unexpected but it's been a, a positive surprise okay. 